for we thank you god all right all right we thank you lord jesus we praise you good morning ladies good morning morning good morning and good morning we are here okay good morning everybody it is obviously late and there is no doubt of why. So this is Karen Edwards down in Houston. I've got a, a team of intercessors. So you see some other beautiful faces on here. There is one missing and it is the powerful Mama Linda Walker who had tremendous tr technical problems. Uh, what the greatest part about it was we could see her but we couldn't hear her and she was gonna pray with us too. So I'm really sorry we're late but it just makes me laugh. I see Barbie and Pat laughing too. I know Mama Linda is uh, sitting here right now and she's laughing too because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how, how the enemy just plays the same old things time after time after time again, but we won't relent. We don't care. We know who our God is. We stand um, on his promises and on his truth. So Having said all that, we're going to get right into this prayer call this morning. Let me, let me quickly tell you what's going on, and then I'll go over more of the details, and we'll even do communion at the end, um, because I really want to hit prayer, and I want to hit it hard this morning. Um, you know, Pastor Callie has started this prayer tour. Today, they are flying. Pastor Bob, Pastor Callie, Pastor Todd. Pastor Cindy are flying to Portland, Oregon. You know that because we've been praying for Portland all week. Yeah. Um, and uh, all week, Pastor Kelly has had guests on and the guests are from the Northwest and they've been praying for the Northwest. They've been praying for the region. They've been praying for this prayer invasion that's coming tomorrow night. Um, but God told me today, we are praying for our pastors. We are praying for them specifically. Now, uh, the thing is, I know you all are praying for our pastors, um, and I am too, but I want, I want to give you a broader picture. I want to bring you into this even more in the, the importance of this prayer. We have started right from the beginning of this, a network of intercessors from Celebration of Life, and then a few um, from other places. And these women have been praying just relentlessly for our pastors specifically. It's always important when you have any leader leading the charge that they are held up in prayer. Um, but there's a, generally we're praying, but they are very specifically praying. And so God told me, bring them on today. Let them share some of the prayers out of their mouths and, and bring everybody into this, all of the women. So I just want to encourage you as we move into this, and we're going to move into it quickly because Barbie Perry has to hop off in a few minutes. We don't have Mama Linda on right now. But as we, I want to just encourage you to stay locked in. Like, don't let this be a prayer out of Barbie or Pat's mouth um, that you receive and listen to it and you're encouraged by, but stay locked in. You might even repeat the words out of their mouth as they're saying it. I mean, I've done that before with Pastor Callie's prayers, just said them out loud so I stay locked in um, because our pastors need us right now. And I'm gonna give you some instruction on um, even some cool things from the Bible about this, but because Barbie has to leave, I'm just gonna say, thank you, Barbie. Um, for being so faithful. Barbie does not um, come to Celebration of Life Church. She, she, she is a part of our family. She's a part of our tribe. And she's a powerful woman of God. But more than that, she loves our pastors. She loves um, this vision. And more importantly than anything, she is a, a, an incredible lover of Jesus. So um, Barbie, why don't we start with you? And then I'll kind of flow after that with some of the other things I had to say, because we don't want you to miss. And I know you have to go. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yes. So Father, we just we just love you. We love your name. We love representing you on the earth, just being those ministers of reconciliation. God, the way that we can even, as children, learn the Lord's Prayer on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we just pull that down right now into our homes, into our nation, into Portland, Father. And Lord, we pray that you would press that into the pastor's 
traveling, every one of them in the unique ways. God, I just see the way you weave things together and make a strong cord. God, just all the different anointings and giftings as we call each to mind, God, in our hearts, we see the strengths and the uniqueness and the beauty of each one of these. God, the way that you have woven yourself into their very DNA, God, to express yourself here on the earth and all the all that woven together to make a strength to drop into a city, God. And Lord, all the things that they pick up along the way in each of their travels, those gifts those impressions, those times in the Lord, those things where they press through, those places where the sword just cuts and makes such a difference between what is needed and what is not, what is you and what is not, and what is of you and what is not. God, you just make it so precise. And God, I thank you for the deposit. It's like you're weaving them into a cord of strength and you have formed them into a basket, God, to carry your blessings, to spill out into a place, God. Lord, we just... We just desire, we cry out that you would pour yourself into Portland. You would bring a messenger of hope. God, you would bring a we, a we the people. Everywhere across this nation, everyone is crying out for something. They don't even know what it is at times. It's just this angst. If they don't know you, they don't know what it is. If they know you sometimes, we don't know what it is. But God, we cry out for something knowing that whatever it is, you're the missing piece. And so God, however you can use our team going in and those who are on the ground already, God, we just ask that you would pour out the blessing in the basket that you have for this time, this right now time. God, I pray your protection as they travel. I pray that every little thing would go well. And Lord, I thank you for all of the appointments all along the way. Everywhere we go, we have people that we can shine your hope and your love on. And Lord, I thank you that that's happening even now as they travel. I thank you for all of the details. God, I love that you are out of time. You are here, you're in the past, you're in the future, you're everywhere at once. So we're now praying for something that you're waiting for standing in the future. Like you're ushering us off, attending us on our way and waiting to greet us as we arrive. You, we are so hidden in Christ. We are so surrounded by you, our whole team. God, I thank you that all of that is present always. And especially now when we launch as an army, yes. God, when we, as, 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 as your people, as, as, as even those who represent us, you know, pastors that we pray for God, you know, just you put yourself in them. You surround yourself around them. You are before, after, and during them. God, you just love the way you just saturate time. There's no place that we can go and be that you're not in it or waiting for us or already been there. It's present, past, and now to you always because you exist always. And Lord, I can't even get my mind around that, but I find such safety in that. God, thank you for those moments of time. I thank you for perfect timing everywhere they go this morning. God, I, I thank you for... Callie and the way that she occurs like an exclamation point. <laughs> Father, I thank you that it's like, boom, this is it. And Lord, it just severs all the confusion. It severs all the noise. And God, I just, I thank you so much for Cindy. And I thank you for her strength and her steadfast presence. God, she just walks in and says, yep, you can count on it. And our spirits just settle in like, that's what God said. <sighs> I can walk in that. <laughs> God, I love that. I love the way you do that. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Linda here in Houston. God, I thank you that nothing the enemy does technology wise to mess us up can stop our voice. No. Our voice is not stopped by technology or audible noises. God, you, 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 you conquer even that. You say what can't even be heard. You speak to us, even when sometimes the pastors are talking, you're saying different messages to people. They're like, wow, that's really great when she said, and she didn't even say that, but they had that message because of you. You are so in control of it. God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for all of these on the call with us today. God, I thank you that their voices are exclamation points too.
And I thank you that they are the ones who stand and people around them go, what God is saying can be counted upon. I can lean on it. I can lean on what God's saying. It happens suddenly and I know it now, a revelation, and I can lean on it. God, I thank you for that. And I pray that in every city and every represented person here, that that basket of blessing would just flow. God, that you, your revelation and your strength and who you are and what you are saying right now, the we, the people, all of us, God, we just collectively join our voices and we join our prayers and we join our hopes, our great hopes for this nation and especially Portland, God, that it would be a tipping point that that basket of Portland, everything you're pouring in, it would be that awakening, that exclamation point, wake up. And then it would be, this can be counted upon. This is ground you can walk in. You can, you can move in this. And Lord, I thank you that it just pours over the nation. God, I, I thank you for these things. I thank you for this team of ladies. And I thank you, Father, for just your presence everywhere at all times. God, we bless your name. We love you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. Love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Love In you. Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Barbie. And as you're praying, Barbie, I just want to tell you women, as you're praying, I heard the Lord tell me, say to the women, so this is for all of you. He said, say to the women that I thank them right now. He wants you all to know how pleased he is with you. You are making a profound difference in this battle. And it is not just about our pastors. It is about all of us. And God wants to remind you of that. As a matter of fact, in Ephesians 4.16, um, God showed me this last night, you know, that, that we, we're all part of the body of Christ and we use our giftings to, pray, to come together and all of that. It ends up being a reflection of his love. That's really the point of all of that. And today we are all collectively using our giftings of prayer. We're using our giftings of leaning into God and we're doing it together, all of us. Not one single person on this call um, matters less. We are a body right now. So according to Ephesians 4, 16, we are walking that out right now in Jesus' name. I sense we should take communion right now. Let's go ahead and go to our communion right now. Um, and, and uh, you know, we know that this is a supernatural meal. We love doing this every day. I couldn't go a day without it. Um, we know all of what it means. We've been doing this since March together. Um, but today we want to take the communion. We want to take the body and the blood. We want to be reminded of what Jesus did for our pastors specifically. So that every prayer that we pray, we're sealing it with the broken body and the blood of Jesus. So let's take the bread right now, Jesus. We adore you. It is by your stripes that we are healed. Keep our pastors healthy today and on this trip, Lord Jesus. Lord, you took everything on the cross. You bore it all for us. And you bore it all for Pastor Bob and Pastor Callie, Pastor Todd, Pastor Cindy, and every leader that's praying, Pastor Jenny, Pastor Bob, all of them out on in the Northwest, Pastor Laura, Pastor Dav. We pray, Lord, for all of them, Lord Jesus. And we take your body in remembrance of what you did on the cross for us, for them, and for this entire world. We take this blood, Lord Jesus, and, and we, we stand on the blood of Jesus today. We believe you, Lord. We trust you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that is pouring over our pastors as they travel and over the Portland prayer invasion. Every leader that's been just, just sacrificing for you, Lord, for, you, for this nation, for the great awakening, Lord Jesus, for souls, Lord Jesus, protect them. We plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. We take this in remembrance of what you did until you come again, Lord Jesus. We are here praying for this world until you come again. Until you come again. We love you, Jesus. Wherever we, the Lord says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. We abide in you right now, Lord Jesus, as we continue to pray. As we continue to pray. Um, Pat, would you pray for our pastors? 
Oh, and what the pastors out on the West Coast. Thank you. Yes, what an honor to be a part of this wonderful team and to be an intercessor for our pastors today. Father, may they walk with divine courage and boldness and may healing and deliverance come to Portland and surrounding areas as the revival fire of God sets their territory ablaze with an unquenchable desire for righteousness and holiness. Yes. Unite their hearts, Father. Unite the churches, unite the communities, unite community leaders. We pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit over the mayor, the city council and other governing officials in that area. Let the blood bought Holy Ghost fired up millennials usher in revival in that region, Father. May they usher in the greatest revival our nation has ever seen. And may the revival fire spread from the West Coast to the East Coast in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, um, in the book of Exodus, I want, I want you to write some of this stuff down, the book of Exodus. Um, just know, I want you to understand how important everything we're doing is right now for our pastors today. Um, verses 8 through 16. So Moses uh, and the Israelites are in the wilderness, right? They are, um, Moses, if you think about Moses, this is, this was, <laughs> Moses was a leader among leaders, right? This man, he was a large capacity man. He could handle much. Think about the things that Moses handled, what he did. You know, um, uh, we could go on and on. Study Moses and you'll be like, I want to be that kind of leader. You know, I mean, it's just incredible. So he, he could handle much. But when, the, when Moses was leading the Israelites, they faced their first battle. I'm looking at the word, so I don't say this wrong, but it's Amalek's, okay? They faced, all of a sudden there was a people called the Amalek people, and they, they were facing a fierce attack, a fierce attack. And as the battle began, now let's, let's, oh, let's bring this biblical story into our own life right now. Let's insert what's going on now, right? Fierce battle, a fierce spiritual battle is what we're facing. Okay, we're praying for our leaders today. We're praying for our Moses today. We're specifically remembering that they need to be held up in prayer. And so what happened back in Exodus 17 is as the battle began, Moses is up on a hill and he's, he's like up top and he's observing the battle and, and things are going on and he's praying and he's praying with his arms lifted up. He's praying, he's praying, he's praying. And when he's praying with his arms up, the Israelites are winning the battle, okay? But he finds that as he grows weary, as his arms grow weary and start to fall down, the tide turns. And all of a sudden the Amalek people begin to like, you know, take ground and start winning. And so Moses is even as strong a leader as he is, he needs help with his arms held up, he needs help. And uh, what happens is Aaron and her, okay, insert you, okay? Pat and Barbie and Karen. And I wish I could look at the list of everybody that's praying right now, but all of you, let's see how many right now are on here. Let's see if I can, I just wanna make this so personal for you. Okay, so 281 women right now, you are Aaron and her. Aaron and her are up on the mountain with Moses and they hold his arms up. They literally hold his arms up so that he can continue to pray in his weakness. And listen, as they held his arms up, the tide turns and the battle is won. So Aaron and her, you, praying for your pastors, praying Aaron and her, praying for Moses, you and I praying for our pastors who are leading this may have a profound effect on the tide turning. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the tide is turning. In the name of Jesus, I pray that tide is turning. You are Aaron and her, her. we are Aaron and her, and our pastors and our leaders need us to keep praying out loud every day for them. I want to give you, um, I, I, will, I was going to pray, but you know, I'm looking at the time 
And I'm realizing that if we're going to say the enemy had something to do with silencing, silencing Pastor Linda's voice on this, it's because we believe that. And so um, I'm thanking God right now that I printed out the prayers of this intercessor team that I've been reading and praying with on the WhatsApp. And I actually have a prayer that Pastor Linda gave to the entire intercessor team for right before travel. She's done a lot of them, but this is prayer as travel time draws near by Pastor Linda. And I'm gonna read it out loud. And again, I'm gonna encourage you that there's so much um, instruction in, in listening to a, a, a woman who's been praying her whole life and the wisdom of everything that you can cover in pr prayer. Yes, we can say, God, thy will be done. And yes, we can pray in tongues when we know not what to pray. But when I think about the completeness of this prayer, bringing all of this to God for our pastors, I just um, I, it just excites me. So I'm going to go ahead and just read this out loud. And again, stay locked in. Stay locked in. Repeat this stuff. Jot some stuff down. Repeat it again tomorrow, the next day. Our pastors are only on week three of a 15-week tour. I was telling Andy that the other day um, I heard on the news 92 days until election day. And I was like, oh my goodness, that means 92 days that the pastors are still traveling and the prayer tour is still going on. That's a lot of time away from their church, their family, or should I say away from their family and away from their church. These are big sacrifices. So we're, we, um, we, we just wanna hold their arms up. So let's hold their arms up right now. I thank you, Jesus. You are going before pastors Todd, Cindy, Callie, and Bob this week, today, making the crooked path straight and raising up the lowlands where, wherein they can walk. I praise you, Jesus, that your manifest presence will go before them every step in protection, good health, wisdom, and provision. I thank you for complete unity within the team and no one participating, which is not ordained by you, sweet Holy Ghost. All food and water they eat and drink will be free from all germs, disease, or infection, infection particles. Every room they sleep in will be sanitized by the presence of God. Every planned germ assignment will be dead before it arrives. The blood of Jesus covers them from head to toe and fingertip to fingertip, and every demonic assignment is null and void. In Jesus' name, every demonic assignment is null and void in the name of Jesus. We praise you, Jesus, that all their children are kept under your precious blood. Yes, Jesus, cover their children in your precious blood and their grandchildren, Lord Jesus, as they're away from them. We thank you for that right now. Bring them comfort that they would normally get from Pastor Bob, Pastor Callie, Pastor Cindy, or Pastor Todd. You sweep in and be for them what really only you can be anyway, but no, Lord, they're human grandparents and parents. They are missing them. So be with them, Lord Jesus, be with them. I thank you that their children will walk in total peace concerning releasing their parents for your assignment. We praise you that their children will feel the love of Christ flowing from our COL family to their parents while traveling. On every print plane, we praise you that all recycled air will be filtered through your divine presence, causing all contaminated particles to die before to die, therefore causing the air to be clean, enriching their physical bodies. We thank you that. We thank you, God, that their bodies will be strengthened on those planes and not touched by anything, anything impure. We thank you, Jesus, for the wall of fire of protection, revelation, and manifest presence of yourself to envelop them. Envelop them right now, Lord Jesus. And I pray that they sleep on the plane today, Lord Jesus, that there's peace and sleep for them on the plane today, Lord Jesus. May we lift up their hands 
Here it goes. We're honoring her. I didn't even know this was in her prayer. May we lift up their hands when hanging down with fatigue. May we be faithful to the vision and prayer for their family, our family and COL. I praise you, Jesus, that we, all of us, watchmen on the wall in behalf of our pastors and all the travel prayer invasion team of 2020 Vision Day and night, through the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray that we intercept all demonic plans against them in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ and the power of the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, our pastors literally feel the thrust of our unified praying on their behalf. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Linda Walker's prayer. We thank you for the completeness of it, Lord Jesus. But right now, I just ask every lady here to have confidence in your own voice. Lift up their arms. Be Aaron and hers for our pastors. We plead the blood of Jesus over our pastors. We plead the blood of Jesus over the Portland pastors that are leading this prayer invasion, Lord God. As they grow weary and fatigued, we will lift their arms. We will not stop all the way through, all the way through to from seven to 10 tomorrow night. We will be praying for them. We thank you, Lord, that they're covered in your blood. We thank you for their protection. We thank you for their provision. We thank you for their healing. We thank you for the power that will flow through them. We thank you that that this is making a profound difference. We thank you, Lord, that you're shifting things. We thank you, God. We thank you for the heart and soul of America. We thank you for this third great awakening, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that the demonic powers are ceased and stopped by your might, by your power, by your blood, by your voice. And you are faithful. You are trustworthy, Lord God. We know that you're listening, Lord God, and we trust you. I'm going to close with... um, the scripture from Joshua 1, 3, and I'm going to give you two different versions of it. Joshua 1, 3, this is our pastors right now that we're praying for, but this is you too. Joshua 1, 3, I have given you, I have given you every place where the sole of your feet tread. I have given you every place where the sole of your feet tread. That is why even in the states where there is no gathering allowed, the pastors are flying in and putting their feet on the soil as they pray because God promises that in Joshua 3, another version, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. And here we are today. We are standing on Exodus 17. We are Aaron and hers for our Moses. And God is listening. We love you, ladies. We, I, I am so grateful for you. Pat, thank you so much for praying. I know Barbie had to ha- hop off. I'm thanking you, Mama Linda Walker, for your fierce prayers for our entire network of intercessors that are praying for our pastors. And thank you for joining tomorrow night online. Keep sharing. We are also joining in with Patricia King and firewallusa.com. So if you haven't kind of looked at that, we pray a half hour and then we continue on for another hour or another different hour in the day. So you can go to there and sign up for that. Um, Remember also, this is prayer, this is fasting, and this is giving. And in these three things together as women, we're seeing mighty miracles mighty miracle. So there will be link for giving to continue to pour into the ability for everybody to be traveling and um, doing this prayer invasion. And we thank you for that. And I want to just mention one more thing. Um, We have the crown conference in December, December 3rd through 5th. And women, you are our family now. We are, we are together. We've been together since March and we want you there. We, we, some of you we've never even met, and yet we know you by your Facebook picture and your name, scrolling day after day after day, lifting us up, lifting the country up in prayer. Um, so go look at that too, and we'd love you to join us. God bless you all. We'll see you here tomorrow morning. Pastor Callie will be here tomorrow morning with the Davenports, the pastors of the church that is hosting the uh, prayer invasion tomorrow night. And don't forget, 7 to 10, Okay, catch this, 7 to 10 Pacific time. So for those of us in other time zones, we're just going to have a really late night Holy Ghost party. I love you all. Good night. (laughs)